क्लिक द बेल आइकन टू गेट लेटेस्ट वीडियोस फ्रॉम ईकीडा हेलो फ्रेंड्स आई वेलकम यू ऑल टू द सब्जेक्ट डिजिटल इमेज प्रोसेसिंग दिस वीडियो इज फ्रॉम द न्यू चैप्टर वी आर गोइंग टू स्टार्ट विद द न्यू चैप्टर द चैप्टर इज टाइटल्ड इमेज ट्रांसफॉर्म्स as you hear this particular term transforms you may have encountered it into the engineering mathematics subjects so z transform the laplace transform fourier transform and several others you may have learned there so some image transforms are there having applications into the subject digital image processing various fundamental steps that we have learned into the first chapter that include image enhancement image segmentation image restoration image compression the object recognition morphological image processing so all these subsequent chapters actually the fundamental steps of our subject digital image processing require image transform so that the applications are possible with it so image transforms actually provide some kind of convenience to have those particular tasks and achieve the result here so up till now in the first chapter we were introduced to particularly the subject digital image processing we have actually seen the difference between the analog image and digital image so now i hope we are very much familiar what exactly the digital image mean and further in the second chapter we have covered digital image fundamentals right from the understanding of human visual system we have termed them the elements of human visual perception so how the image is formed on to the retina then the artificial senses we have seen how the image is formed on to the digital display we can say by the use of this particular sensors and by the potential of image sampling and quantization we have represented these images into the digital domain we have the intensity resolution the spatial resolution we have also seen the basic relationship between the pixels into the image sample various mathematical tools that are required into the subsequent chapters the fundamental digital image processing steps we have seen the classification of images various image types the image file formats as well as the various types of resolutions with respect to the digital image now this particular chapter image transform is somewhat mathematically oriented so let us first of all begin with what exactly the need is there to have these much of mathematical operations so that we can understand the particular use and the need of this transform so let us begin with so our topic is need of transform from the chapter name image transforms and the domain is digital image processing the prototype we see here so what exactly the image transform is i must introduce you people to the understanding of this particular image transform so image transform is basically a representation of a two dimensional signal image we know that image generally we have represented f of xy where x and y are the two spatial dimensions hence we say that it is a two dimensional signal that can be represented into a plane so the image signal holds this two dimensional visual information so image transform provide us alternate ways with which we can uh, represent this particular visual information it is not always possible that the visualization of that particular type of domain will be uh, available in proper way to our human eye but the information can be stored there information can have proper representation that provide the convenience in processing certain digital image processing task here so the efficient representation of such type of visual information lies at the foundation of many image processing task which include image filtering we know the low pass filtering high pass filtering that are also possible with the image operations the image compression task where we require to store the images with less amount of memory and the feature extraction so feature with respect to the image is any useful information extracted from the image so feature extraction is also one of the task Uh, with respect to the image analysis further we say after digital image processing so lot many uh, 
task with respect to the images are there where we require the efficient representation redundancy should not be there and that should be able to reproduce further as well as to give more information and to be processed further efficiency of the representation is actually we can define in one line it is actually the ability to capture significant information of the image in a small description so the word significant is most important as well as the small description is also there so in less amount of memory less amount of samples we should be able to represent that much of image information and that is possible with the help of image transforms we can say these efficient image transforms are extensively used into the image processing and image analysis domains the transform in mathematical way is a tool so which allows us to move from to switch from one domain to another domain so generally the time domain or spatial domain are switched to the frequency domain so the representation of the image generally we find into the spatial domain because x and y are the spatial dimensions these are the measurements of the lens so instead of having the spatial dimensions we can switch to the frequency so what is the frequency content into that particular image that we can see if we use this particular types of image transforms we can say what is exactly the reason to migrate from to switch from one domain to another domain the reason is that uh, to perform the task in, at the hand in an easier manner we switch the domain it may be a case that the task that are very much complex into one domain will be a simpler one into another domain the example we have the time domain convolution is nothing but a simple multiplication into the frequency domain so either to have that much of complex task activity procedure into the same domain we must switch the domain with the help of these image transforms we can say next another advantages are also offered by using this particular image transform or simply by transforming the image so let us see the first advantage the transformation of the image may isolate critical components of the image pattern so that they are directly accessible for analysis purpose the end use of the image processing is to have analysis and use it further for the proper application so image analysis become very much easy as the critical components may be isolated by using those image transforms we can say another advantage we can have the transformation may place the image data in more compact form so that it can be stored and transmitted efficiently so the compact form we can say that in less amount of memory more information can be stored by the use of by the help of image transform so this is also advantageous to go for the use of these particular tools mathematical tools we can say the image transforms are also used for the fast computation of the processes like the 2d convolution and correlation also earlier into the subjects like digital signal processing it was very much easy if we are working with only one dimensional signal but now we have the information signal to be the image data that is the two dimension so as one dimension has been added up the complexity goes on to the increasing so that can be made easier with the help of image transforms transforms change the representation of the signal by projecting it onto a set of basis functions the term basis functions is very much important as we know into the physics the material is having the basis in a basic entity of the atoms we can say here so for the copper material the atoms are different for the silicon material the atoms are different for some another material the atoms are of different types these atoms form the molecules molecules form uh, again with a systematic pattern that particular material so the basis is the basic foundation with which we can have the storage of that particular information representation of that particular information reproduction of that particular information so basis function are the very important one and if the transform have mathematical formulation these basis functions are of very much importance 
so the representation is done by projecting that particular information onto these set of basis function every image transform has its particular basis function of different type offering some advantages some limitations are also there but to look at the particular application we can select the proper image transform the transforms do not change the information content into the signal we can say so the question of losing the quality losing the information is not there it simply switch from one domain to another domain the transform is also reversible as we say that generally the transforms are uh, making a switch from time domain to the frequency domain spatial domain to the frequency domain if you want the representation back to the original uh, parent domain we can say time domain or spatial domain we can get switched back with the help of inverse transform we can say next most of the image transforms the examples here are listed the fourier transform discrete cosine transform wavelet transform very potential tool into the image processing so etc give information about the frequency contents of the image now we can have a simple definition of image transform we can say that operation to change the default representation space of the digital image uh, like the spatial domain what we represent f of x y to another domain so that all the information present into the image is preserved in the transform domain but represented in different manner so this way we can have a simple definition of image transform now we come to our exact point the title of this particular topic what is the need of the transform i hope what exactly the transform is now it is clear to you people so the very first advantage or the very first need we can say to have the transforms into the use is mathematical convenience every action in the time domain or spatial domain will have impact into the frequency domain so the example can be given the complex convolution operation into the time domain is equal to the simple multiplication operation into the frequency domain so as like many another task may be there that may become simpler if we switch one domain to another domain that is why whatever the mathematical procedure we need to follow so that can be made with the help of convenience if we use this image transform the second important point is to extract more information so the transforms allow us to extract more relevant information uh, that may not be possible to have representation in one domain but possible in another domain so here we take the example of this particular geometrical object i can say this is actually a prism so if we are using a prism uh, for the light theory you may be knowing the example that from a narrow slit a white light from the sun we can say if it is entering one side of this particular prism on to the another side the sorted spectra of this particular white light we obtain in the form of red orange yellow green blue indigo and violet we abbreviate it as vibguire so this is the spectrum of the white light that is available on to this particular side so we can say that the information that is not available on to one side that may be available by uh, having transformation from this for example the glass prism so that is the importance and the need of the image transform more colorful example we can have with this particular diagram again the white light uh, got resolved into this particular spectral bands right from red to the violet so here the person one is having very small information that only white light is there with it but the person two that is standing on to the another side of this particular glass prism has more information we can say so that is the potential and the use of the particular transform for applications into the digital image processing so we can have a simple classification of the image transforms so based upon to the nature of basis function the basic entity with which we are going to regenerate that particular signal as like the fourier uh, is also having the fourier basis another transforms are also having the basis that require to follow the conditions of sometimes 
mostly the orthogonality and the orthonormality so based on the nature of those particular basis functions we have a simple classification of four types here so the transforms with sinusoidal orthogonal basis functions can be collected to have some kind of classification type another one the transform with non sinusoidal orthogonal basis function so the condition of orthogonality is must so the basis function should be the orthogonal but uh, sometimes the basis function is of sinusoidal nature sin cosine or it may be of non sinusoidal nature also next type is that transforms whose basis functions depend on to the statistics of the input data so if you consider the statistics so those kind of image transform can also be categorized into one category here and lastly we can have the last one that is transforms whose basis functions are capable of representing the directional information present into the image if we say that the image contains vectors vectors are directed ones so directional information if it is represented by the use of transform we can make the last category of such image transform so this was the simple classification so overall whatever the image transform we are going to learn in this particular chapter that we can list out here various image transform the very first and the very popular tool into the signal processing image processing we can say that is a two dimensional discrete fourier transform simply for signal processing we can take 1d dft also but for image we require two dimensional discrete fourier transform it is also along with another one uh, that switches us from the time spatial domain to the frequency domain that is called as discrete cosine transform the work is same but the way is somewhat different it offers some advantages some limitations also the energy compaction is uh, more with respect to the discrete cosine transform as compared to the two dimensional discrete fourier transform next we have har transform which is the very basic wavelet transform having much of the potential into the various image processing applications into the domain of remote sensing you can say into the medical imaging you can say and acoustic imaging also we can say next we have the walsh transform hadamard transform slant transform kl transform and lastly the radon transform we are going to cover in this particular chapter i hope the need of transform for image processing is much clear now so a summary can be done here it is a mathematical tool which allows us to move from one domain to another domain because to perform the task in the hand in more easier manner next the transforms actually do not change any kind of information content present into the signal the signal here is the image and also they provide the reversibility we can get switch back from the another domain let us say frequency domain back to the time domain we can say so the next lecture we are going to cover the next topic of this new chapter image transforms the topic is a two dimensional discrete fourier transform i hope you are understanding it well so if you like to have some more details of these topics you can subscribe to ekida channel thank you